Well, it's a big night of racing coming up on Saturday evening at the Meadowlands. It's the $1.2 million finals for the TVG Championship. And for more, we bring in Justin Horowitz. And Justin, let's begin in race number four. We'll begin the first two races with the Pacers. Race four, $200,000 purse. It's the free-for-all filly and Mayor Trot. Hannah Lore Hanover, your 7-5 to five morning line favorite. Your top six coming back from the Breeders' Crown Final. Well, I can't hear you, Joaquin, but I'm pretty sure you just asked me about Hannah Lore Hanover, so I'm just going to go with that. Uh, yeah. This is the first of the four TVG finals. It's the Mare Trot. Um, $1.2 million in total purses. This Mare Trot goes as race four on Saturday night, 200000 And you're right, we'll see Hannah Lore Hanover, the Breeders' Crown champion, who just won two weeks ago. She's actually facing the top six finishers from the Breeders' Crown, so it's pretty much the same exact field she beat. Uh, two weeks ago at the Meadowlands, and she was a pretty convincing winner, a two-length winner as your 7-10 to 10 favorite. She's the 7-5 to five morning line favorite in this spot, and the major contenders are the same ones that finished second, third, fourth behind her in the Breeders' Crown, and that's number seven, Be a Magician, who's her major contender in that spot. So uh, if we take a look back at the Breeders' Crown, this was a race that, although Hannah Lore Hanover is on the front end, she's got Shake It Carry first over with David Miller just to her outside, and Brian Sears is behind her with Be a Magician. And at this point, Hannah Lore Hanover looks like she's getting a big challenge from Shake It Carry, who's made a really big move first over. And look at Be a Magician, though, completely locked in. Nowhere to go. Brian Sears has a lot of horse and really nowhere to go. Yannick Jingra did a great job in keeping her locked in. And then he asked Hannah Lore Hanover and she kicked away. And Sears was just too late getting out. So if you're looking to try to beat Hannah Lore Hanover, I think you have a little bit of a chance if Be a Magician is able to get a better trip than she did in the Breeders' Crown. But from a wagering standpoint, to me, it's 2-7 are the two best horses. Shake It Carry is a sensational horse, 2.7 million. This is her career finale, most likely. But I think if in fair trip situation, it's Hannah Lore Hanover and Be a Magician. Well, Justin, I can hear you just fine. Hopefully, you can hear me now. That was race number four, a preview of the free-for-all Mayor Trot. Let's go to race number 10 now. $400,000 stakes event. This is the free-for-all for the Trotters. You have Bar Hopping, the lone three-year-old in the field, who is looking for four in a row. And your 7-5 to five morning line favorite, that's Resolve, who was second in the Breeders' Crown. Yeah, that's right. Bar hopping got a special invite to be able to race the aged horses. You don't see that very often, if at all, the three-year-olds taking on the aged horses. But this was the Breeders' Crown Open Trot. And there's Resolve, who was your one-to-five favorite. And Flanagan Memory, who is not back in the TVG, sat a perfect trip on his back. We were surprised to see Aki Svonsted driving Resolve not be on the lead, because that's where that horse has been best. He's really dominated this division. And Resolve actually looked like he was all done at the top of the stretch, but held on gamely and re-rallied to be second. And you saw JL Cruz, who was actually the age trotter of the year last year in harness racing, finished up with a lot of late interest. So to me, you have to decide if Resolve maybe just has had maybe one too many big races this year. Remember, he went to Europe earlier this year. So perhaps he's a horse that might be a little bit vulnerable as your 7-5 to five favorite. JL Cruz looks to be cycling back the right way. And to me, the horse that I actually want to play is number four, Crazy Wow. He made more more than a million dollars last year as a three-year-old. He's first time Lasix on Saturday night for Jingra and Ron Burke. And I thought he needed the last race, believe it or not, the Breeders' Crown. I think he'll be better in his second start off of a qualifier, adding Lasix. And I think he's just too good of a horse that has been right there in many big races this year. And I think this might be the chance on Saturday night for him to break through and get his signature victory in 2016. All right, so those two races for the Trotters. We now move towards the Pacers. Race number six, $400,000 purse. It's the free-for-all pace. We'll get to always be Mickey in just a second, but it was announced earlier this week on Tuesday that Wiglet Jiglet is going to miss the final. What happened to him? Yeah, I was able to talk to his, to his owner, George T. Came up a little bit sick and has a little bit of a foot bruise, and you, you can't really blame him for that. He's raced every single big spot all season. So, unfortunately, we don't get to see round nine between Always Be Mickey and Wiggle It Jiggle It. So, instead, we're left with Always Be Mickey, who's going to be 1 to 20, as short a price <laughs> as you can be. This is his last career race, and quite honestly, 
He's the best horse in this field, and it would take something unforeseen for him to lose. This was the Breeders' Crown final. There's Wiggle Jiggle on the front, always be Mickey on the outside, and Wiggle Jiggle looked like he was a winner, and always be Mickey because he's just such a champion, just kept grinding and grinding and grinding and just got by Wiggle at Jiggle in the shadow of the wire. I mean, this was a race that people will be talking about. I know in the Thoroughbred game, people were talking about that Breeders' Cup distaff that we saw last week. But in the Harness game, that was our version of it. Always be Mickey and Wiggle at Jiggle have just completely dominated the sport. And so when you get a race with just one of them, like we have in the TVG, to me, it's a layup for Always Be Mickey. I would be absolutely stunned if he doesn't win on Saturday. All right, that's race number six, last race to preview is the eighth race, $200,000 purse. It's the free-for-all for Philly and Mayor Pacers. Four to five, odds on, morning line favorite. That is Lady Shadow, goes for three in a row. Yeah, and this division might as well be renamed the Lady Shadow Invitational because she's just completely dominated this division this year. She was an open lines winner in the Breeders' Crown Final two weeks ago. And again, like many of these other races, she faces a very similar field as the one that she beat on Breeders' Crown Night at the Meadowlands two weeks ago. And the reason that she's so dominant besides her speed is just she has a tactical advantage. Look at her turning for home. She is open lengths in front of the field. And the problem for the rest of the competitors that she faces is they do their best work from off the pace. And Lady Shadow's a mare that loves the front end. And when you're a mare that's able to open up lengths on a field turning for home and still kick home as much as she did in 28 flat, these other horses like Sasa Hanover, who got up to be second, and Frost Damage Blues, who was third, they're just too far back. They can't close any faster than they did. And Lady Shadow still held them comfortably. So it looks like a fairly chalky sequence of race on Saturday night, but it's really tough to get by these big favorites. To me, the way to play them individually is you got to use the favorites and try to find some big prices to use underneath or the fact that these races are split up. They're not four in a row. They are part of separate uh, early pick four, late pick four with some overnight races where you might be able to catch a price and use those with some of these favorites that look pretty tough in these finals. Justin, thank you. Always appreciate the insight. Enjoy the racing this weekend. Thanks a lot. We'll see you Saturday. All right, Justin Horowitz giving us the rundown on the TVG Free For All Championships. It's coming up this Saturday. You'll see it live right here on TVG. First post, 715 Eastern.